All right, welcome back to our second installment of Distant Learning. Uh, today's lesson, Simple Interest, is from Lesson 7.1.8. I highly recommend that you open up the online book and that you read through all of the examples uh, before you start working through the problems and before you watch too much of the video, because I have to go through this really, really quickly. You can always pause it and back it up to hear what I'm saying, um, but I'm going to run out of time because there's a lot going on here. So first of all, interest is money earned for the use of money. So you you normally have interest if you deposit money into an account and the bank pays you a, a small amount of interest every single month or every year, or more commonly is when you take out loans for like a car or for a home or for a small business, uh, the bank will lend you the money and will charge you an interest rate, which you have to pay back in addition to paying back how much you borrow. Today, we're just gonna focus on simple interest just to get you accustomed to how interest works. And simple interest is, is just that, it's simple. It's only applied to the original principle, being the principle of what you either borrow or what you deposit. So this is the formula that you should write down. I equals PRT. The P, the R, and the T stand for the principle, the rate of interest, which is a percent, which gets changed to a decimal number, and then the time, which can be in weeks, months, years, any unit of time. Take those numbers, multiply them together, and that will tell you how much interest you either have to pay on a loan or how much you will make if you are putting it into a savings account. I'm not going to read through this page. You read through it uh, and then catch up to me. Okay, so here we go with our first situation. Student council wants to borrow some money, so they go to PTA to borrow some money, and the amount of money they need to borrow is $825 to rent a hall. PTA says, hey, yeah, we'll loan you that money, but we're going to charge you 2% in simple interest for each week until you pay back the loan. So doing the 5D process, we recognize this as a simple interest problem. So here's your simple interest formula. We know the loan amount is $825, so that's your principal. And the interest rate is 2%, which we would change to uh, 0 0.02, which is 200. And now... We don't know how long it's going to take before we pay this loan back. So what we can do is we can multiply the 825 times the 2%. And that tells us that $16.50 is the amount of money that we're going to have to pay per week until we pay this loan back. Now, please stop the video, work through these problems, see if you can apply that formula, and then come back to me. And now I'm going to show you what the answers are. So first off, I'm going to clear out these boxes just to show you some work. How much money will they charge per week? Well, we already answered that. That would be $16.50. If you had it for one week, how much would you owe? So the amount of money that you owe, look over here in the blue, you have to pay back what you borrowed plus the interest that is charged to you. And so for one week, plus $825 is $841.50. For three weeks, you're going to multiply uh, 1650 times 3, then add it to the $800, uh, $824, no, $25, to get $874.50. Now, for the last question, how much would you have to owe if you borrowed for two months or eight weeks? Well, it's $16.50 per week, so you'd have to pay $132.00 because that's 1650 times eight, and then that would get added onto the 825, so you'd have to pay back $957. So you might think that's a ripoff to have to pay back more than what you borrowed, but it's not your money. If you wanna borrow their money, you have to be willing to pay the interest. That's just how it works. Here's another situation where they say, all right, we need another $1,000 because we forgot we gotta hire a DJ. So at 2%, how much would that be? The loan amount is $1,000, 2% of 1,000 is $20. So this would be the proportional relationship. If you spend no time uh, borrowing money, you don't have to pay any back, but every week thereafter, you have to pay back $20. Now, the PTC is being very kind to you and they're gonna say, you know what? We don't necessarily need $20 per week. We'll take $18 per week. So now this changes the nature of the problem a little bit. The simple interest formula is geared toward you multiplying principal, rate, and time 
to find out the amount of interest. But if they tell you the amount of interest, now you're going to use a little bit of algebraic reasoning to figure out, you could figure out the principal. That could be the missing variable. You could figure out the time. But in this case, we're going to try and figure out what would the interest rate be that would pay them $18 in interest each week. So we'll set up the formula. There's the interest, $18. Here's the principal, the amount you borrowed. That's 1000 We don't know the interest rate yet, and we know it's per week, so we're just going to put a 1 for time. Multiplying the 1 times the 1000 and you get 1000 and now we solve for R. What number do you multiply times 1000 to give you 18? Divide each side by 1000 and you end up with a decimal number of 18 thousandths. Right? That's the decimal equivalent for this fraction, 18 thousandths. But we don't want to write it in decimal form. We want to give it as a percent. So you move that decimal two places to the right, and that means they would charge an interest rate of 1.8% right there. Okay, so this is kind of a, a table that kind of shows you what's happening here. Every week, you add on another dollar amount. So in this case, this situation is $1,250, and the interest that's being charged per week is $1,875. So I'm guessing we're going to have to figure out what the, uh, what the interest rate is for this situation. But one week, you just add it once. Two weeks, you add it twice, or multiply this times two, three weeks, and four weeks. So based on this table, how much will the student council borrow? What is the interest rate? Hmm, let's work over here on this side. So we know the 1875 is the interest and the principal was 1250. And then for each week, we're just gonna have a one there. So when we divide 1875 by 1250, what's the decimal number that we get? 15 thousandths, which is equivalent to, I believe, 1.5%. So how much will the student council owe after three and four weeks? Well, we've got that information already up here in our table. So we're just gonna copy those down. And then how, how is the amount of money that the student council owes changing each week? This is a little bit more complicated. I'm not sure I'm gonna expect you to be able to do this quite yet, but if you look over here, problems C and D, um, we'll see how we get to this answer. Since it's increasing by $18.75 per week, that can go into a formula that says the new amount that you're going to have to pay is going to be whatever you borrowed plus the amount of interest that you pay per week times the number of weeks. So we can figure out after five weeks just by plugging in a five there and multiplying it and then adding, we'll get the new amount that you have to pay. Uh, problem E is uh, kind of complicated, but we're just going to use this formula and it says, all right, the president figured out that if the student council does not pay off the loan by the end of the school year, it would owe $1,500. So how many weeks is that? Well, now we can put in the $1,500 to the amount and then use our algebraic solving ability to solve for T, which will tell us the number of weeks. So we'd subtract $1,250 from each side. Then we would divide each side by $1,875. And what we end up with T, which is the number of weeks, would be 13.3 repeated. So between 13 and 14 weeks is how long uh, it would be so that they would owe $1,500. Okay, once again, if I'm going super fast, which I know I am, please pause and back up and, and re-listen, or pause and work through it to the best of your ability, and then come back and see if you're getting it right. Here we've got shopping around. Uh, the, you know, If you wanna go around to different uh, sources of money, they all have different terms. Uh, the local bank is willing to, uh, to give you $955 for 1%, weekly. The math club will give you $940, but they're going to charge you monthly 4.5%. And then the booster club doesn't tell you the percent. They just say, just pay us back $36 per month if we lend you $960. So I'm going to clear out all of these boxes here and let you see the work that I've done. And then I'll explain each part as we go and hopefully not run out of time because if my videos are longer than 15 minutes, YouTube does not wanna accept them. All right, we'll just keep it right there for now. All right, so looking in blue, we've got the local bank. At $955 at 1%, that means that every week is gonna be $9.55. 
since the others are done by the month, I decided to multiply that times four, and that would be like a month. So it looks like the local bank is charging $30.20 per month. The math club at 4.5% in decimal form times 940 is $42.30 per month. And the booster club, we didn't have to do any calculations because they already told you what the monthly rate would be. So which one grows more quickly? The, the math club, $42.30 is the most amount of interest per month that you would have to pay. So now let's look at the booster club. We want to figure out what their interest rate is to see how they compare to the others. We just plug in $36 for I. We know the principal was 960 for one week. What is R going to be? So take 960, divide it from 36, and you get 0 0.0375, which is 3.75%. So looking at their interest rates, the booster club has a lower interest rate than the math club. And I think that ends up being like 4% per, per month since it's four weeks in a month, right? So uh, it looks like the math club still has the highest rate. So now here's the big question. For which loan would the student council owe the most money overall after three months? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take each one of these situations and plug in the interest rate for a total of three months. Since this is 1% per week, I changed three months into 12 weeks. $9.55 times 12 weeks means you're gonna have to pay the local bank $114.60 for the use of that money. The math club is 4.5% times 940, so it's $42.30 per month for three months for $126.90. And then the booster club is 3.75% uh, on 960, but we already know that's $36 per month, so that's going to be $108 total for three months. So which one do you have to pay back the most? Uh, well, technically, it seems like it would be the math club, right? But the math club, you borrowed the least from them. So when you paid it back, you only had to pay back $1,066.90. It turns out this is the one that's the highest amount because you borrowed 955 from them and you had to pay back $114.60. So the final answer for this is at the end of three months, they will owe the local bank the most money. That would be $1,069.60. So when you're doing simple interest problems, they'll tell you it's a simple interest problem. You do the 5D process and the information you need to record is what is the principal, what's the interest rate, how much time are we talking about, and uh, how much interest would you earn? And they're gonna give you three of these four parts. Once you know three of them, you can figure out the fourth, either by multiplying everything together to get the interest earned or having to do some multiplication and then division to solve for one of these three variables. Okay. Good luck on everything. Take your time. Use your calculators. Simple interest isn't that difficult, but it just takes time and practice reading through, understanding where all the different parts go, and plugging them into the formula. Good luck.